Hey everybody, Aaron from the Bulba here, back with a new series. This time I will be playing Divine Journey 2, which is a Minecraft mod pack. Uh, it's actually been played on this channel before by both me and James. We did about probably like 8 to 10 episodes. You can go check it out, but I'm going to be playing it by myself for right now. So first thing we're going to do now that we spawned in is put game rule keep inventory on because I'm not good at this game. Uh, and I'm going to die, and I don't want to lose all my stuff, because that would be very bad, especially this bag. I don't want to lose the bag. <clears throat> now that we covered that, let's get into the story of this mod pack. It is a mod pack with a whole bunch of different stuff. Look at all these chapters. Um, and it starts a little bit with the story. So what is Divine Journey 2? Divine Journey 2, uh, expert pack oriented around Divine RPG and automating magic mods. Um... It's an expert pack, so it'll take a long time to complete. Long series we got going on. Pack is structured around progression. Most things are gated, which is why there's so many different chapters. Recipes will be expensive, uh, so some of them are changed, like making a crafting table or a chest or a furnace is actually different in this mod pack. The goal of the mod pack is to find the meaning of life, which is located inside that gold bag in my inventory, though I need a key to infinity to open it, which is what causes... Uh, all of this stuff to happen. It goes into the structure and stuff of the mod pack. Though that's not as important as just understanding um, that I need to open the bag, essentially. Uh, we can click through the rest of this kind of right now. Um, it's not going to be super important. And we can get right into actually playing the mod pack. Um, Alright, so first things first. I'm going to want to go explore. Um... It said that the recipes are hard to make, and that's true. Like, look, if I just go in here and I just look up crafting table, uh, it's <laughs> it takes a stone pickaxe, a stone axe, and a crafting base. Um, and that's not even, you know, that's still pretty easy. Not obviously as easy as regular craft tables, but look at, like, a chest. Oak wood planks, logs, and then iron... You need to get iron before I can have a chest. You're losing your goddamn mind if you think I'm doing that shit. Instead, um, I'm going to go find a village or some buildings like that and go from there. Ooh, <gasps> big mountain. I think I'm going to live up there. I want, I've want. i always wanted to make a castle that's on like a set of cliffs like that. And you know what? Um, this is going to be quite a long mod pack, so why not go and do it? So, there's a crafting table right here. I love these buildings right here. Give a lot of what you need. So, we've got a crafting table right here. Obviously, we're taking that. Stone knife. I'll take that. Um, let me take this acacia sapling. Because you never know what you're going to need. Let me take these torches here. That's very helpful for laying stuff up. I might take the door, actually, too. Let me come down here. I will be taking this. I don't really actually... I will be taking the bed as well. I don't actually need a lot of this stuff. I'll take pumpkin seeds. I'll take mushrooms. I'll take all the saplings. I'll take TNT. That, 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 that. The rest of it... I'll actually take mycelium. That could be helpful for growing mushrooms. The rest of this can actually stay. Um, it's going to pop out because I'm grabbing that. But I will throw it back. Not like that. <laughs> uh, get these out of my inventory. I don't actually want them. Let me take this torch right here. Um, and then let me come up here, and I'm going to... So we actually have Vein Miner on, so when I do this, it'll give me all the spruce wood. Damn it, it just put me back in the thing. Uh, Alright, uh, let me take those and just go... Blah, 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 dum, 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 dum. Get out of my inventory. Get out. Uh, let me come around and grab these logs right here. So this is going to give me one chest, one crafting table. Oh, hold up. So, uh, something of note. So that right there, you may be like, oh, go and get it. That's easy food, right? Hay bales. Watch this, right? We go to hay bales, and we press U, which tells us what you can use them for. You can't actually craft wheats with it. You can't do it. See? You have to crush it in a machine to get wheat out of it. Meaning it's not even worth it to go get those hay bales right now. It's genuinely not. It's much more worth it for me to just go and try to scale this mountain right now. Because um, I'm going to set a waypoint. We have waypoints. I can press the map here. And I can add waypoints, which I can teleport to. Which means that getting set up 
on top of this mountain is going to be great for uh, actually going and living there eventually. Um, so I'm going to make the trek up this mountain uh, and set my waypoint up here so that I can just teleport up the mountain um, when I want to go home instead of having to walk it. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we made it to the top. Only took a couple minutes. So these are crag cliffs. The blue is interesting. Um, I don't know if I love it. I don't think I do. I do love the blue. It's just a little too much for me. And I don't know if my building skills are enough to actually, like, get something out of it. So, methinks I shall find another cliff set to live on. And I should bail. Alright, let me... <laughs> See, that's really what I need. I need uh, a set of cliffs that I can just... Uh, skydive off of whenever I, I want to leave. That's genuinely what I need. And then I just teleport back up whenever I'm done. Um, Alright, let me head this way for now. Um, yeah, these this beginning episode might honestly be a lot of exploring until I kind of find where I want to live. Because um, I don't want to settle. Because I feel like if I settle somewhere, I'm going to start putting like infrastructure there. And then I'm going to be less likely to want to move. And because this is going to be such a long series, I'm not really in any rush to set up and progress just yet, you know? I feel like I'd much rather take the time to actually build up uh, a place that I personally would like to live in. Um, instead of just kind of hurrying right through getting quests taken care of. Because at the end of the day, wow... Getting through the quest line is how we actually, quote-unquote, beat the mod pack. Uh, this mod pack, to me, is a, a, a lot more than just getting to that quest. You know, I want to make it an experience. I don't think I've ever really done, like, a solo Minecraft playthrough like this. Um, so, this will be something new for me. Um, Alright. <clears throat> Let me get up here let me i will murder that cow oh no untrue pacifist i murdered things cry about it all right so the the thing is right there's that kind of mount it, that's more of like a hill set like this is called like the badlands i want cliffs is like like when we saw before it said crag cliffs i want cliffs that just you know uh, that are just super massive front, and I want to put, like, my entire complex on top of it. Um, so I'm not going to live on these hills right here. Got some lag coming, but that's what happens whenever you generate a new world and you're generating all these new chunks and all that kind of stuff. You're going to get lag. Uh, let me stop in this building right quick, though. Uh, to see if there's anything. I will be taking this crafting table. As well as this acacia, uh, acacia sapling. I'll also just give myself those levels right there I got from the cow. Um, I will be breaking this chest. Actually, let me get the stuff I want. I want charcoal. I want my son. I want the book. I want that. 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 I definitely want that. I want that. I'll take the mushrooms and all the saplings and definitely the cactus. So I will leave the flowers Oh, I should sleep. There we go. Don't want it to turn nighttime and get murdered. That would be bad. Um, though I'd keep all my stuff, which is cool. <laughs> uh, let's go this way. So I'm looking for a village, and I'm looking for a place to call home. What is this biome actually called? This kind of like hilly, this hilly biome. I don't believe I want to live here, but I want to be able to make a, the distinction, you know, of, like, why I don't want to live here. Rather than just being like, it's not as hilly as I like. Rocky Plateau. It's just called, like, a plateau. Yeah, so this is a plateau 
not cliffs. And daddy wants cliffs. That was cringe. I shouldn't have said that. We have a bunch of stuff from the Bewitchment mod. I'm super excited to get into that. I've recently been re-watching uh, Chimney Swift 11's Attack of the B-Team series. One of the most classic modded Minecraft series ever. If you've never seen it, you're missing out. Go check it out. Um, uh, and in that mod pack series, um, Chim Chimney does a lot with the Witchery mod. However, I believe that the mod creator for that stopped making it or updating it as of 1.7.10. But somebody later made the Bewitchment mod, which took very, very heavy inspiration from the old style Witchery mod and updated it to more modern uh, Minecraft packs like one2 12.2 now here's a crazy thing for all you young minecrafters that are somehow still making it to this village i don't know if that's uh this point in this village to this point in the video i don't even know if that's possible with attention spans being the way they are but you never know uh, there could be some stragglers um the last time i seriously played minecraft like was actually decent at the game was 1.7.10 and that was near the end of me playing this game. Most of my time was spent in the horse update when horses came out in 1.6.4. That was my favorite time. I love that time. It's great fun. Um, yeah, so all this, like, new stuff they have now, uh, like, as of, like, 1. Point, they have, like, 1.20 or some shit. Like, god damn, man. It's so crazy. Uh, I will not be eating all these carrots because I want to save one to actually... Um, grow it eventually. So I have carrots to grow. Um, let me scale this and see if this is something I'd want to live on. Because there's water right be below it. There's a river biome, as you guys can see, that we're in it right now. In the, the map in the top right corner. Extreme Hills. I don't think this is where I'm going to want to live. As I said before, I want to live in a cliff biome. And if you're wondering why I'm so set on living in a cliff biome, I actually was playing this mod pack for fun the other day because uh, I was sick. I got the flu. Uh, and oftentimes I've found when I'm not feeling good at all, I come and play Minecraft. I think it's very much like a comfort thing for me. Um, so I was playing this mod pack actually, and I started setting up my base on like uh, on a cliff, and I was like, I had so many really cool ideas. I was so excited for it, and I was like, wait, what if I did this as a YouTube series and recorded myself doing it, rather um, than me just doing all this cool stuff and nobody getting to see my cool stuff? Why don't I do it for the YouTube? So I decided to do that also um doing it for youtube and make a concert for it would actually help me stick it through in a lot of ways like if i did it just for myself i, I definitely wasn't it wasn't gonna last that long i'd get bored of it or whatever and just move on to other stuff and i'd never get to actually fulfill all my cool ideas because my brain is very weird um if i don't see something is productive i don't usually stick with it so like me for example me playing minecraft by myself you know i'll play it when i'm feeling bad when i'm feeling sick or depressed or anxious or whatever because it makes me feel better right but uh, that doesn't that doesn't happen that much not to say that i don't feel depressed and anxious or not feel great like that's not a common feeling i have i wouldn't say that but um me being in that state of mind and then deciding to play minecraft <laughs> that is something that doesn't happen that often so what's this thing uh <laughs> so um me actually going through and making the cool castle on the cliff side and actually like finishing this mod pack was never gonna fucking happen <laughs> ever um so i decided that maybe actually making a youtube video would make me more likely to, to do this shit. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, I just grabbed that mushroom right there. Uh, I have some mycelium in my inventory. And my hope is that I can actually grow mushrooms. 
um, when I start up like a base somewhere, I think it would be really cool. I don't think I've ever actually grown mushrooms except whenever I used to play Skyblock a lot back, back in like the 1.7 days. Um, it's the only time I actually attempted to grow mushrooms because in Skyblock you do... And this isn't no like fucking high pixel Skyblock bullshit. This is like genuinely like you'd go on a server and you just played Skyblock just that's that's what happened you just you actually did the sky blocking instead of getting like fucking minions to do shit for you or whatever i don't really know how high pixel sky block works um that was way after my time in this game and i would never oh village i would never in a sense try to go back to it because everything is so different and i don't think i'd be able to do it if that makes sense like the combat you have to remember the last time i played this game was before 1.8 was 1.7 so it was before that combat update that came out in 1.8 i changed how the combat worked and after that i kind of lost everything so we're gonna take the ingots we're gonna take the books we'll take the pumpkin pie we'll take the golden carrot leave all the flowers take the mushroom we'll take all the saplings i'll definitely take those melon seeds and i will take the cactus and i will also be taking this chest and then i will go up let me take this acacia sapling and then i'm gonna go to the village i'm probably more likely than not gonna end up throwing a bunch of stuff in a chest and waypointing it so i can come back later because i do not have the inventory space right now oh oh shit Th that's it just amazing Technicolor glasses? You got me fucked up, game. I think I'm about to go fucking risk my life in that shit for just that. Nothing else. You guys got me all the way fucked up, son. Alright. Let me start taking apart this village. As in classic Minecraft fashion. You walk into a village and you just immediately go, I think I'm about to steal. <laughs> uh, so these little houses aren't going to have anything. Ooh, Slime Island. Uh, you don't really have anything I want. I remember back in the old villages, the only buildings had anything you want. I want the libraries that had all the books in them and blacksmiths. Like, what the fuck is this? Why is there all these crafting tables? Honestly, I'm not going to complain because it's cool as shit. Oh, furnaces. That's a pistons, levers, coal. Uh, yeah, so much. Ooh, hold the f phone i will take that wood back i actually will need that i'm also going to take the bread and the apples back because i'll probably need those too um leave the chests leave you leave tnt leave you leave 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 yep i'll take all those i can leave that i'll actually take i can leave that i'll take the bed with me for sure take the knife with me that can go that can go. oh that can go that can go that can go let me put that there that there that there and i'll get the bread for now All right, let me throw down this bed. Is it not nighttime? Oh, apparently in the Darklands, things are just a little different. Okay, so that's cool. Here's the blacksmith. Is there anything cool in here? Armor. Oh, let me take off this. What is this? Two? One, two. What does that do? Oh, it gives me an extra heart. Oh, it gives me extra health. That's cool. Okay. Well, then I'm definitely going to throw these pants on right quick. I'm definitely going to look to actually make possibly a full set of copper armor. That's awesome that it gives me just extra health buff. What's in here? Oh, is this the jam guy? Yeah. I don't actually know how to trade with villagers. <laughs> you, know, you actually can't. Oh, there's a whole bunch of food and shit in that one. Maybe I should actually... No, nah, we can raid village later. Vill village later. We found the village. Which has everything we could possibly need. Oh, Aaron, don't be a fucking idiot. Almost forgot to waypoint the village. That would have been bad. Let me waypoint that. Alright, now we run off into the wilderness. There's our stars. Let me throw this bed down right quick. Yeah, so actually my plan for this series... I'm going to talk about this for a little bit. <clears throat> Is I want to film myself playing. And I'm going to make it like a Let's Play series. But I also plan on possibly making it a 100 days series. Because I know that's like a 
that's a much more meta way to uh, post Minecraft content. It's a lot faster paced and heavy hitting and action oriented, which is what the people want out of YouTube nowadays. People aren't as, um, they don't take as well to the let's play style of content, which is a lot m slower, more casual style of gaming. Um, and that's one that I grew up with was let's play gaming. Uh, you know, the, um, Watching, obviously, the popular ones like the Markiplier's and the Jacksepticeye's, but also, like, the Northern Lions and the Mathis Games and the Splatter Cats and the the Rad Brads of the world. Uh, watching Kevin LaShawn play GTA. Like, those type of more Let's Play-oriented gaming series is a lot of the gaming content that I grew up with. Um... And thus is, you know, something that I'd like to recreate. Um, I don't think having a calmer style of content, while it may not get you the views that a more uh, energetic and um, fast-paced electric sort of content may derive or give you, um, I do think there's a niche for it. I mean... Uh, you know, what What are the two styles of content that you see all the time? Mr. Beast clones, or just people trying to do, like, super fast-paced related stuff, and podcasts, which is the exact opposite. Podcasts are super calm, super chill, uh, super unassuming, super low casual energy. Uh, it's two opposite sides of a coin. And, you know, I think that... Having a podcast, the same energy as that, can be applied to other forms and sides of content as well, including gaming. How do you actually tame parrots? And what do y'all want up there? Why are you guys all flying there? You probably need seeds, right? Can I tame one right now? Pterospores. I don't need that shit right now, man. Where are the seeds? Beetroot seeds. I don't need those. Garlic. I want normal seeds. This is actually ridiculous. Barley seeds? Can I feed these to a, a parrot? Hello? No. I don't even know if it actually is seeds they need. I could just be waffling. There we go. Seeds. Which one do I want? The red one, probably. Oh, we didn't. Fuck it. I don't care. I don't care. I'll find. There's so many parrots. I'll find. Find more. I don't, I don't even care. I don't even care. I'll find them. Oh, here's uh, one of these hut things. Anything that I'd like in here. Uh, I'm not going to take the chest. That's just too much work. I will take all the c cool stuff in it, though. Oh, including my, that. Oh, uh, holy shit. Bruh. I don't actually know that much about Divine RPG, but I know that there's, like, the Cyclopses everywhere. Those are actually friendly. Like, they don't... They don't hit you unless you hit them first, uh, which there's no need for me to hit them first right about now. But I actually, you know, this mod pack in a lot of ways is built around Divine RPG, but I actually don't know too much about it, uh, funny enough. So, you know, I am somebody, I would say that I am knowledgeable about certain mods. Um, not all of them, of course, but about certain ones for sure. Um, big ones come to mind are like thermal expansion. I feel like I'm pretty knowledgeable in, uh, modular power suits is another good one. I'm pretty knowledgeable in, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, applied energistics is one that I feel pretty comfortable in having, you know, in the tech series, um, James Ryan and I did, I did set up like an auto crafter and the whole ME terminal and all that shit. It's been several years. 
since I've done that, to be fair. But at the same time, it's like riding a bike, right? <laughs> I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. Across the desert, span, man. I breathe the mountain air, man. Traveling at my fair, man. I've been everywhere. I've been to Boston, Charleston, Tate, <laughs> and Louisiana. Uh, it, that would be a fitting song for uh, me walking through the Minecraft world montage right about now. But And to be fair, at this point in my life, my voice is actually at a stage where I feel like I could technically... Jesus. I could technically cover that song. And I feel like... I mean, I can't sing. I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, I can definitely c sing just as well as Johnny Cash. But I feel like the tone of my voice at this point... I feel like I'm bassy enough that I could do the, I've been everywhere, man, I've been everywhere, man, cross the desert, spam, man, I breathe the mountain air, man. You know, that, that reminds me, you know, it's wintertime <clears throat> right now, I've been sick for a very long time at this point, and I'm just starting, hopefully, hopefully, I'm on the upswing, getting back to being able to live my life, I miss going to the gym, and I miss drinking, uh, it sounds really sad, the second one especially, like I miss drinking, but you know, it's, uh, <clears throat> for my people out there that are um, Americans and 21 plus, uh, or not Americans and 18 plus, or whatever the age of your specific um, region of the world allows you to drink, um, for adults that are of drinking age, <clears throat> going out to bars and drinking and such is, um, it's a, it's a social activity. In a lot of ways, um, you know, as working adults, uh, socialization is not as easy as when you are in some form of schooling. Um, <clears throat> so you take the time that you do get to socialize, um, and it's important to you. Oh, oh, oh my god, oh my god, a pumpkin spider. Ah, eh, eh, pumpkin spider. Nah. I don't need a pumpkin, but I did get Terran shards, so there's that. Uh, you take the time, anyways, <clears throat> you take the time to socialize, the more pumpkin spiders run away as being very important to you. Because uh, you don't, you know, you don't feel like you get the opportunity to do it a lot. Um, and you could just be like, well, yeah, why don't you just socialize doing something else? Great question, right? But that's, the, like, the a casual way that most adults, especially in the wintertime, socialize. In the summertime, I would have no problems. Uh, other than the fact that I was ill, so I wouldn't really want to, like, go outside and do shit. But you know what I'm saying? Like, drinking is the, uh, it's the most common way that you socialize at this point in your life. Either getting dinner or getting drinks, um... And, you know, bitches be working late, so uh, dinner's not always an option, right? Um, so, yeah, it's it, it's very important to my socialization, and I miss it. But that's, you know, that's, I'm ready. What was I even saying? <clears throat> I'm ready to get. Oh, I, I remember what I was saying. Uh, so it's winter time, so I can't do as much. I'm ready to get back in the world. However, come summertime, when it's warmer out, I think I would be very interested in giving this channel a little more variety and possibly posting some vlog content you know i'm somebody who very much enjoys the outdoors i enjoy hiking i enjoy climbing i enjoy camping i enjoy going places and doing cool shit right don't we all um and i think and i think it would be cool to uh, film myself doing some of this cool shit and and put you know editing the videos and posting them and seeing what you guys think you know you guys can kind of i've been very much somebody if you watch my content for any length of time i've always been somebody who has kept my content my making of youtube videos and the person that you guys see in here um in these videos separate from my real life that doesn't mean i'm pretending when it comes to my personality or anything crazy like that like i'm still the same guy but like i don't um it, I, you know i keep them very separate you know most like 99 percent of the people in my normal life have no idea i have a youtube channel 
And uh, most of you guys that watch, other than you know the members of my family and friends who do know about this channel, um, they know about my real life. But like you guys and YouTube don't really know that much, other than the very, very limited amount of it that I feel comfortable sharing. Um, and I think the vlog content would be a way for me to comfortably share my um, some of my other interests and such that you guys may not get to see that side of from your perspective. I also think that the videos could be fun uh, because they would be videos of me uh, doing fun shit. <laughs> and that fucking sounds awesome. I love doing fun shit. Uh, and, you know, I get tired of making all these videos uh, sometimes where I just sit at my desk um, and just talk about stuff or play games and talk or have a topic in mind and talk. And, you know, I, I, I obviously I enjoy making those videos or I wouldn't do them. You know, I don't make money off this shit, so, like... The only reason that I even do them is because I like the I like the process of making content and sharing and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's not as though I'm, you know, I hate the form of content that I make or anything crazy like that. But I, you know, I I want this channel to be more. Than just what it is. The whole point of the ball pit, and obviously it would be a little different if James still made videos. Well, I mean, he still makes videos, right? I mean, he's, he posted a video uh, about Valorant last week, I think. Um, so he still makes videos. You know, it's not like he's not, a, it's not like this isn't a solo channel. As much as it is, because mo like 99% of the videos are mine by myself. It's not a solo channel. James is still a part of it. He's just really, really busy in art school right now, which is a, like, you know, everybody always makes fun of, like, conservatives always make fun of, like, art majors and shit as, like, doing some shit that doesn't matter. But I'm telling you, from witnessing James go through art school, that shit is way harder than a normal college. Genuinely, like, I mean, because you think about it, like, my homework when I was in college would be, like, write a five-page paper about this sociolo sociology book fucking easy right that shit is that shit is light work james's homework will be like fucking paint five still life portraits by a, a class in three days it's like what the fuck what do you mean paint five portraits are you on crack how am i gonna have time to do that for like six classes like somebody has got to be making up time because the, it, what you're asking of me is not possible. You know, like that was that's a that's a reality for James. That's the the reality that James lives. Um, and the only reason I even feel qualified to say that I understand what James is going through at all in terms of time is because in my spring semester, my senior year of college, I was working twenty plus hours a week at a restaurant at the same time as trying to finish up college and meet my graduation requirements, which was fucking insane, by the way. I don't recommend it if you don't have to. It was genuinely insane. Um, uh, like, uh, we were both so busy, James and I, that I, <laughs> we actually one time went an entire week without seeing each other, even though we lived in the same apartment. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was crazy. But anyways, uh, if James was here, obviously it would add some more variety and some spice to the channel, but he can't make videos at this point in his life as often. So, uh, a lot of the, you know, a lot of it lies on me and, you know, I do have plans for more exciting or just different forms of content. But at the same time, I also understand that I, uh, work a full-time job, you <laughs> full-time, like, you know, they make contributions to my 401k and that type of job, like a real fucking adult career, um, alongside that, and, you know, I also have family and friends and goals and aspirations outside of YouTube, which, on which, you know, obviously makes creating content a lot harder, which is a big reason why we have been 
for so long relying so heavily on a more casual style of content because it's something that is more realistic for me to provide regularly. Like, I'm, I don't do this full-time. I can't do this full-time. Uh, I don't have that luxury. As much as, you know, Mr. Beast would go on things, be like, yeah, I just, like, totally fucked off everything else and just dedicate myself to making YouTube. Like, that's cool, right? If your entire passion in life is to make YouTube videos, go for it, man. That's awesome. I'm glad you found your thing, and I'm glad you're working towards it. My goals are more than that, you know? Um... Even if I made enough money in um, out of my YouTube videos to genuinely make this a career, I would not want it to be the my career. It would always be a uh, a side hustle for me because uh, my main passions in life are sociology, not you know, not. Uh, making stuff and while creation creating stuff is an incredibly deep passion of mine that i you know will always be a part of my life in one way or another in one medium or another um i will never i would never be able to fully itch what i have in term the passions i have in terms of sociology you know i eventually I one day want to be a professor of sociology. That's my goal. It's my dream. Um, you know, I work well. I've been working with youth for a very long time, and I know that college aren't exactly youth, but I've also been working with older youth, including, you know, 18, 19-year-olds, um, in my past, and I found it quite enjoyable and quite fulfilling. And, of course, sociology, to me, is something that is both enjoyable and fulfilling. And... Uh, in that same breath, um, I my life was changed a lot for the better um, when I took sociology courses in college, and I learned so much, and I fell in love with the science uh, of it, and I wanted to do it for the rest of my life. And you know, the fact that I myself fell so deeply in love with something makes me want to try to repay that and pay it forward and study study things and change the world somehow create in my own way in a sense um and you know being a sociology professor for me was that moment and some people who are adults that maybe work in career jobs they may know that moment but you know, for my whole life, even when I was, like, a kid, uh, people would say, you know, what do you want to do when you get older? What do you want to do when you grow up? And I'd always say, I don't know. Even when I was a kid, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I genuinely didn't know. I was a super curious kid. I wanted to explore everything and learn everything. And so I didn't know what I wanted to do. And in high school, um, just, you know, my personality, the way I was, the way I interacted with other people... Everybody pushed me towards psychology. Uh, they were like, you know, you have a really high like EQ. You work really well with people. You understand people. Um, you understand body language super well. Like, you should be a therapist. And for a while, I thought I wanted to be a therapist because therapy has helped me at multiple points in my life. And I, you know, I'm very much, if you can't tell, somebody who likes to pay it forward. Uh, when things make an impact, a positive impact on my life, I look to see how I can re create that same feeling in other people you know i want to pay back the virtues and everything that i've experienced in my life um but everybody was you know so that's what i thought i wanted to do i majored in psychology in college and i i fell into a bit of a dark place and i didn't really know why there's a lot of different reasons to be completely fair that I fell into that kind of uh, a spot. And one of them, which I didn't really realize at the time, was that I wasn't truly fulfilled by what I was learning. I wasn't truly interested in psychology. I was doing it because everybody told me I'd be good at it. And that is something that they thought would fit me. Uh, and I never really uh, felt 
connected to it. And it wasn't until I sat in my... And but I took Social 100, right? Social 101 or whatever. And I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. But, you know, I didn't really... I Nothing really clicked. It wasn't until I sat in criminology, like, you know, Crim 200 or whatever, Intro to Crim, uh, and I had one of the best... My favorite professors I've ever had. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to obviously display their identity because, uh, you know, it might dox me low-key if I told you guys who because you could Google and find out what college I went to and, you know, it's not that far from my uh, current residence. So, you know, remain with, you know, approach this with caution. But uh, my one of my favorite professors, probably my favorite professor I've ever had teaching me, uh, Krim. And it was at that moment when I, uh, one of the days when I was in Krim and I was like, hmm, I really, really like this. And then um, I got a note from my crim professor uh, that was sitting on my usual desk I sat in uh, every day um, when I got to class the one day that said, hey, uh, can you you meet me in my uh, my office hours after class? And I was like, yeah, I have time. You know, I don't have a class for... I don't have a class for an hour after this. I have an hour break. So, yeah, I can I can meet you in your office hours after class. <clears throat> and so I do. And my professor looks at me and says, Hey, I can see you have a real affinity for this subject. Uh, you seem to be doing really well. You're super passionate about it. You're really good at it. Um, and I noticed that you are... A psych major you're not a social major or a crim major uh like normally come through this class um and i wanted to know if you'd be interested in doing a social minor because i think you would really benefit from it you obviously are very interested in it i think it's something you should look into pursuing i was like okay i, I will and i talked about it with like my mom and stuff um and she was like, yeah, like, you know, if that's what you want, go for it. Go take a social minor. So I did. I took a social minor. I declared it. Um, and then the next semester, the spring, that spring semester, I took another course from this professor called Sociology of Deviance. Um, and I liked that class even more than I liked my crim class. And I sat there after one of my classes that I really enjoyed getting, you know, getting ready to go to one of my psych classes that I didn't really enjoy. And I said, in my head, to myself, I said, Aaron, did you pick the wrong major? And I thought about, you know, um, switching my major. I thought I was switching my major. But you have to understand, at this point, I was in my junior year of college. I was three years now in. Um, and I was like, can you really like do that? Like, uh, that's a lot of money to switch your major and have to go through that whole process and stuff again. This far into it, like you may be too far gone, genuinely. But I talked to this professor, and she brought up that potentially I could double major. Um, and at first I was really hesitant. Because to me, it sounded like a lot of work, right? Um, and it'd be hard to double major. And my professor said, you know, it, it will be hard. It will be hard. But I think you can do it. I think that you're a student that this double majoring system was made for. So I said, okay. Talked to my mom about it. We looked at the credits and we figured out that if I did all these classes and got everything i needed to basically if everything worked out i wouldn't have to take even an extra semester of college i could graduate at the same time i was planning to with a double major instead of a single major so i could essentially take the major i wanted to still save all the time i spent on the psych major and not lose even you know a semester, a graduate, right on time like I was supposed to. It's the best of all worlds, right? Perfect scenario. 
And so that's what I decided to do. Um, I did it. I got through college. I graduated. And, you know, through that process of me doing that, I and, you know, me appreciating and idolizing and looking up to that social professor that helped me through this process and this time so much that um, I, you know, I think I was sitting at home over a winter break at one point. And, um, you know, I was just talking to my parents about what I could do in life. Because, you know, as I said, I still had no idea what I wanted to do. And my mom goes, you could be a professor. And I went, haha, yeah. And then I sat and thought about it. And I was like, wait, I could be a professor. I don't know why, but the thought of being a professor had never crossed my mind before. I guess I thought that, you know, it was just this you know professors just naturally spawned they weren't created like it was just so unrealistic for me to do that and then you know i thought about it and i was like you know it was the in that moment uh, and i'd never had this moment before I'd never had it since where it felt like everything clicked for me like i said yeah you know what i being a professor is what's right for me I just felt it. I felt it in in just in inside part of me. I was just like, yeah, this is this is what I meant to do. This is my purpose is to be a professor of sociology. Um and I've held on to that feeling since I've never let it go. And I'm somebody who I feel like is super ambitious. When I really want something, there's not a fucking thing in the world that'll stop me from getting it. And I really want this. It is my passion in life. And god damn it, am I going to fucking get it. I'll tell you that right now. I'm going to be a sociology professor. One day. One day in the future. Holy fuck, what the hell was that? And it'll be great. It'll be great fun. I uh, And I hope that I'm super passionate about it. Oh! Oh, big mountain! Oh my god, big mountain. Oh my god, oh my god. That's definitely not cliffs. Definitely not cliffs, right? But it may work. It very well may work. You know what? Fuck it, I'm cheating. I'm not walking up this fucking cliff. Suck my dick. <laughs> Is this where I want to live? Badlands. It's too bumpy. It's too bumpy. It's too bumpy. Sorry, I had to get a good look like that. Sue me, sue me. Click off if you don't. If you don't, if you don't like that, click off. I don't care. Uh, but yeah, that's that is essentially the explanation. Very long-winded explanation, but as essentially the explanation for why I don't want to be a content creator. Even again, even if I started getting the views and subscribers that could warrant me making this like my full-time life career i'd always end up you know I, i'd probably end up quitting my current job and doing youtube and such for a while but i'd always end up eventually uh going to grad school and you know trying to do that because again ultimately that's my dream way more than me making gaming content for the next however many years is um and that's just the way it is but and you know it's something i told my mom because she she asked me she was like well which one do you want to do do you want to be a professor or do you want to make content on your youtube and i said i can't or not just content on your youtube you want to make stuff because i told her about how passionate i was about creation and making things she said you know which one would you want to do for a career and i said I can't imagine a world in which I only do one. So I told her. And she said, okay, well, then it makes a lot more sense to go and try and be a sociology scholar and professor and make YouTube videos on the side <laughs> than be a full-time YouTuber that adjuncts at college courses. And I said, you know what? That's fair. <laughs> That's fair analysis. And so that's what I'm, I'm going to try to do with my life, essentially. I want to be a sociology professor. Uh, nothing, again, nothing will stop me from that goal. Um, 
And, uh, you know, but at the same time, I feel like I will always make stuff. That doesn't mean I'll always make YouTube videos. Uh, my medium for which I can put my creative energy into is not held to only being short form, not even short form all the time, but video content, you know? Like, what if I like to write? Um, I might be interested in making music one day. Who really knows? Um, I feel like my creative pursuit isn't bound by any medium. It transcends medium uh, in just a general raw passion for creating. Um, and I love that YouTube and stuff exist to make an easy pathway to create. I'm probably going to take some time and explore off camera. And by what that means is I'm going to go in creative mode and fly around to make this a lot faster. And so I don't have to waste all this food and then uh, find where I want to live and just go there. And then I'll probably be starting episode two from the cliff face that I decide to call my home. So having said that, Thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode one of Divine Journey 2. Hope you guys have had a great time thus far. I hope to see you in a future ball pit upload. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay well, and stay dreaming.